Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's Tech Voices, we're talking about a trend that is completely revolutionizing software development, and probably much more, and it's called vibe coding, and it involves artificial intelligence. Really fascinating topic. To discuss that, I'm joined by Caleb Bedingfield, field CTO at Amparity. Caleb, happy Friday to you. Happy Friday. Nice to, nice to thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. So, all right. Vibe coding. I hear a lot about it. We we know it's 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 having an effect. It's on the way up. What what is vibe coding? Coding and how is it different from traditional coding or no code approaches? Um, what what is vibe coding? Yeah, vibe vibe coding is. I mean, it's honestly one of the funnest names for a trend I've seen in a while. But what it really is is uh, large language models really burst onto the scene over the last two years. You know, everybody's using Chat GPT and that kind of stuff for everything. Um, but uh, large language models are best when fed with information of real world things to mimic. And turns out there's an incredible amount of code online and there's a lot of need uh, um, to accelerate people's time there. So uh, uh, vibe coding is basically using tools backed by these large language models to uh, generate code uh, based on the vibe. So I know what I want. I want a, a web page that, you know, uh, We'll, we'll scrape the web and, and aggregate all of my AI news. Well, I could sit there and instead of having to learn every single technology, I could just write that in and say, hey, I want to build an app that does that. And, uh, and, and you know, the, the AI tools that have come out over the last you know, 12 to 18 months have really made that possible for people without advanced uh, backgrounds. And so mm -hmm. you're sort of, you know what you want, and you're ch chatting with a, an, an AI to, uh, to help you build it. You know, I, I think that's fascinating, and obviously we hear so much about vibe coding and AI and how it's changing things. Just, just I want to look in the rearview mirror for a moment, and that for for a couple of years there, a few years there was there was low code and no code approaches to software development. It was like, oh, that's so easy. I'm a middle manager. I don't really know much about development, but I can I can do this for with coding or with no code or low code applications. Is that world now gone with, with vibe coding? Um, I would say depends on which category you're talking about. So there are a lot of efforts to make fully no-code software development over the years. Things like uh, like Microsoft has Power Apps, for example, mm, right. where you can have a you know web interface to build functional applications. That has always been a little bit niche, and I think that is is definitely going uh, to to be replaced. Mm. Uh, th there's also the use of that term uh, um, where we're really re what we're referring to is not having to write a script uh, to accomplish a use case. And that, uh, I think, is actually only going to get enhanced. I think that people will be able to do more from interfaces like uh, you know uh, that are designed for non-technical people to execute use cases. Um, but I think that uh, um, the sort of GUI-based software development is probably not going to, uh, you know, uh, it, it, either it will adapt to this model or, mm -hmm. or it will um, uh, go away. All right, so I'm, I'm going to sit down and do some vibe coding. I guess I need a, a, a vibe coding platform. And of course, it's going to be voice activated. I can actually say, I want this, code me this. I'm trying to think about how I would really use it in real life. Obviously, people are using it in business all the time. Um, I, want a, I want an application that's going to help me control the, the thermostat in my house. Might not be the best, best example because maybe that some, some hardware involved there. But um, and it, we, I can create the app. Can I then download the app? Well, I actually want to back up slightly there. You can you can talk to the AI to plan the app. I think that's really one of the gotcha. biggest things here is you can start with, I want to solve a given problem. And you can actually say, what are the things I need to go figure out? You know, And you can actually collaboratively build a plan uh, with the AI. Uh, so a real world example for me recently is, I wanted to build a website for a, something we were launching. Right. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've uh, got a, a lot of engineering background, but less design background. Yep. And so I was able to find some references and say, these are websites that look similar to what I want mm -hmm. and give it some uh, content. This is the kind of story I want to be able to tell. And then I was able to say, okay, you know, I want a website that feels and looks like this and it tells this story and here's some other details about like the color schemes I might want. And then the, uh, it, it, it's, you know, 20, 20 to 30 minutes, but it spat out a fully functional website. Mm -hmm. And then I, and then it takes me one step further where I go, great, this works, but uh, like, how do I deploy it? And it'll actually take you further and you can deploy like a, a full website. Uh, and so I would say it's best for people that could do it the slower way, um, uh, but the, uh, uh, like the more traditional write your own code way. 
But what it does is it really keeps you from having to become an expert in every single component necessary to build software. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to learn every single interface. It will do, it can do that for you. And I think that's like one of the biggest time savers. Like I don't remember, I don't, I, you know, my uh, web development skills are a little old. Right. Uh, and there's a bunch of new tech. So it's, in the old way, I would have had to go learn React and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And um now, you know, uh, the, the code platforms are very good at knowing uh, React and the LLMs are full of examples of that. And so uh, I don't have to learn that part. Uh, I just have to know what I want the result to look like. So what, what platform did you speak with when you uh, created the website? Uh, that one was Claude Code. Uh, uh, Claude, I, uh, you know, okay. Claude. So Anthropic uh, was probably the, uh, the real first successful example of creating a command line tool uh -huh. where you just install it and it interacts with that LLM, but it knows how to write files and obviously all of the, that code. And so you can literally just sit there and, and interact with it. And, and uh, you know, if something breaks, you can say, hey, I tried to do what you said and it, you know, gave me an error and right. then it'll go try to fix it for you. And you just sort of repeat that loop until it works. Um, D did, you, did you write it in WordPress, by the way? No, no, no. I wrote it. It was a React app that got deployed on Vercel. So okay. I didn't, I, 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 my React skills are pretty minimal these days. Mm -hmm. And I had never used Vercel. Vercel is sort of a hosting, uh, you know, a web hosting uh, platform. Right. And, and, you know, I was able to sort of uh, know what I wanted and like it helped me with those, those elements that I didn't know yet. It yep. gave me step-by-step -step, step instructions to deploy it. And, and it took me two hours to go from idea to fully launched website. Amazing. Okay, really amazing. So, yeah. all right. So, so artificial intelligence is the core of Vibe Cody. We know that. Um, does that mean that the you? I think I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask it anyways. Does the user give up control and/or individual creativity? And of course, the answer is no, because you you worked through that. I mean, you 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 said do this, use this color, use this button. So it's what what, what about the user user creativity in the world of Vibe coding? Yeah, I would say um, the it it. At least my experience is that it actually unlocks creativity in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, because the things that it is helping that it has been helping me with are the tedious elements. So mm -hmm. writing tests or learning syntax for a technology that I, I you know only use once or twice. Uh, right. I think that 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 it it is uh, really really good at at dealing with the tedious elements of software development and letting me focus on the creative side, which is what is the story going to be on this new website I'm building or how, or how should that feature work? Or, uh, you know, uh, um, what should the, uh, um, sort of user experience or layout look like. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, I, so for me, it's actually unlocked a lot of, uh, creativity for me. Uh, but I, I think that a lot of that debate comes from its use more towards generating things like images, music, and things that would traditionally be art forms. Um, mm -hmm. that's where I think there's a lot more, you know, it, it lets people mimic, uh, 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 creating art in a lot of ways, but uh, but for software development, I, I would say it actually just you know takes off the handcuffs. Yeah, and I guess it's, I mean, someone might say, well, I guess we just eliminated all the web developers, but of course, the web developer knows some things beyond his or her expertise in code. You know, he she knows that you know blue and green don't go together quite that well. Where I, I could sit down and do vibe coding, I don't, I get all excited. I want you know red and black and zebra colors, and they know like, well, it's not going to work. Long, I guess there's a human element of judgment in creating software that the vibe coding can't really provide because it's just an untrained individual working with a vibe coding platform. Yeah, I would, you know, there is a direct reflection of who's who's using it and what it, what you can accomplish with it. So, mm. uh, um, for example, uh, like an LLM is effectively trained on real world data it's, that's been scraped or fed in from, you know, in, in, in tons of different sources. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, so it can't do a lot of original thinking. Uh, now it can be, it can help you trigger original thought, but it's not actually, uh, uh, going to come up with ideas for you, at least, you know, at least nothing that's truly original. And so as a result, you can, uh, apply your creativity and it can help you like realize that, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, you're not, uh, you know, giving up too much control there. Mm. All right, we've talked about this somewhat, but I want to clarify this one point. So what, what does Vibe Coding look like in practice in terms of the tools and the framework and the, and the workflows? Well, how does it typically go in, in real world scenarios? So, so, I'll give you a, so I will start by with my idea and mm -hmm. um, you, you pick a tool that has an LLM, typically something uh, you know, that is going to be 
you know, one of the more advanced newer models, uh, just because it will typically have gotten better over time because mm -hmm. they were launching new models every few days. Right. Uh, uh, or at least feels like it. Um, and so uh, you go grab one of the later models and, and some interface for that. And you start with what your goal is. And uh, and you can and you I think that the, the kind of unlock for me has been using it to build out a plan. And then you might actually end up using several tools for it. So the actual coding itself, you'll pick uh, typically some sort of development tool. Claude Code is an example. Uh, Codex CLI is, 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 an, is, is the OpenAI equivalent. You know, Gemini CLI is another version of that. Right. And then there's some like VS Code style versions of those premises too. Windsurf is, 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 is probably my personal favorite. Uh, but, just, just to be uh, clear, that, Windsurf is, is what now? Windsurf is a development environment for writing code. Okay, uh, and it uh, and and but the difference is it took the old style of that and made um, the AI element very first class to it, so that it recommends specific lines, but also has its own dedicated chat interface. But gotcha. the actual models it uses are the same as you know Claude, OpenAI. You, oh. you you're able to choose which of those you want to use. Okay, um, and that handles your code element, and then there are actually specialized other elements for um, things like user experience design. So. Uh, V V zero uh, is is from that Vercel platform I told you about, mm -hmm. and that is an explicitly user interface style uh, uh, thing. You can actually give it, pick a template to start from, and then say move that image up, yep. or make the hover, make it uh, so that if you hover over it, it says this text. And then you pa when you pair those two together, you have something where you can do the visual element of your of your development mm -hmm. and the code, uh, you know, and uh, side of it, and and you kind of have a full stack. Uh, software kit at your at your tool. At, cool, at your, that, your tool. that is very cool. Well, I guess I also want to talk about you know what's not perfect about it. I think obviously it opens up an entirely new world of of people who have ideas and are creative. They don't really know software development on on a hands on basis, but they've got a lot of smart ideas. So it really empowers those people a lot. Um, actually, I want to talk about the challenges even before. There's just a quickie on. So so what happens to what happens to the software developers? So what, I mean, what, is this, is this eliminate their jobs or change their jobs or what's, what's your sense of that? Um, I would say that the jury's going to be out on that. And, you know, uh, for, I, I've never seen an innovation that is where I have so much trouble predicting what the outcomes are. Yeah. I think that, that there's a lot of hype around it and right. we are finding new ways to use it. And the optimist, uh, of, at least in terms of the, the long-term power here, is that it will get better and better at doing more, more and more complex tasks. And then I do think it does create job risk, especially at the, the more entry level roles. Um, right. the, but but it, it does have a lot of rough edges right now. Uh, mm. So if like I've been building software for, you know, more than 15 years. So I have, you know, and, and I have a CS background, you know, and right. so the like I got, a, I have a reasonable amount of fundamentals. And if I took my time, I could do, have built that website I described earlier, you know, uh, you know, it, it would have just taken me two weeks instead of two hours. Right. Um, so I think if you don't know how to do it the slow way, then it's hard to know if the AI did it correctly. And yeah. so you can get something that looks correct, but maybe fundamentally broken or mm -hmm. could be insecure or could be incomplete. And right. so I think that building things like prototypes, it's exceptional building things that are for small groups, like a t like a, an application that's only used by yourself or your friend, your family or your team. Sure. I think that applying it to, to uh, real world software development means that you have to put a lot more process and effort into it. And, and it, and really at that point, it just makes each individual engineer much more effective, move, move, move much faster. Mm -hmm. So the, to me, the optimistic version of this is one where I have just as many engineers, but the amount of, uh, of, of code we're able to generate is, you know, you know, jumps by, uh, you know, and we're able to do as much work with a lot less tedium, actually probably twice as much work with a lot less tedium right. um, along the way. Hmm. Uh, I think that's probably the, the, the version of that that I'm seeing most of. I, I do think that um, the odd byproduct here is that we will simply see more applications. Mm. So like uh, recently, you know, um, uh, Imperity just launched uh, Chuck Data and we built that in a, you know, it's our own C uh, command line interface that attempts to apply this, con this concept of vibe coding to data engineering. And mm -hmm. so you can do identity resolution in a Databricks account and sort of do like use case based uh, engineering with it. 
-hmm. we built that at a pretty accelerated timeline but in that like three months that we uh, went after that project no less than i would say nine or ten new ai toolkits uh, from the major players came out mm. you know uh, uh, and, and so i think what, what's going to happen is we'll see uh far more software which will make it harder for each individual software to differentiate itself right yep no i definitely see that one coming well i think I, to close out i i I'd love to get your sense of, of where we're going because vibe coding is in its infancy. So it's, I think we're going to obviously get to a point where a large language model has built, has built, you know, a hundred thousand websites. And so you can certainly build a website and maybe it wouldn't have been production ready in, in July of 2025, but when you sit down and do it in, in, in July of 2026, it's already built a hundred thousand websites so that it knows exactly how to create a, a production ready website and, and all sorts of other applications. It knows, really how to create production ready code, you know, in 2027, 28, whenever the year would be that that will be conceivable. So what, what, what do you see that the future of vibe coding? It's it's pretty massive. I think it is pretty massive. I think that uh, yeah, absolutely. The quality bar will continue to go up. I think what it does is it really increases the importance of um, understanding your business and your your strategy elements. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the time I would, you know, I've found that uh, Software engineers are sort of get to be isolated from the why of what they're building and right. they're just going off of the spec. Right. But for but if I use the example of that uh, website that I built, uh, the like I don't actually know anything about uh, how we're how our Imperity you know measures, uh, um, you know, uh, you know the 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 visits for example or uh -huh. the uh, right. or the, the engagement traffic. with the website. Right. And so you know while the website looks great. It took, uh, you know, I had to then hand it off to our web team to co sort of handle the, the productionizing element of it. And I think more and more of that will get built in. But the problem is, if everyone has access to those tools, then you, the, the, then you're, it's still only going to be the ones that can elevate and differentiate, uh, um, you know, that, 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 that sort of rise above it. If mm -hmm. everyone can build a production ready website, then that's not special anymore. Right. right. And so you're going to have to be able to do that plus something. And so I, I think that, uh, um, it, it's just going to, you know, it, it's kind of like photography with Instagram filters, I think would be a good analogy. Okay. You know, every, you used to have to go down. And I remember when I was a kid, we would go to Sears and we'd take glamour shots and we'd sit in front of a, like a, like a backdrop. And <laughs> that's, the, that's right. the way we get a nice picture for the wall. But now right. everybody has a high definition camera in their pockets and right. things like Instagram have filters to make people who don't know how to take a good picture, able to take a much better picture. Right. Um, and so I think that, uh, that raises the bar uh, for in the business context for how to differentiate yourself in the market. So just making something production ready won't be enough mm -hmm. without it being genuinely well executed and, and clearly aligned with a, a compelling strategy and like unique functionality that, that makes people want to actually adopt it. You know, that it, it, it is going to be a fascinating sector to watch because I think vibe coding goes beyond software development to a lot of different areas of life. And it really sort of points the way to how artificial intelligence is going to revolution our life, Re revolution is our lives. That's a big topic. Uh, that's a that's a five hour conversation easily. I don't think we can fit that in today. But Caleb, you really shed a lot of insights. Really interesting. I learned a ton. And um, please, let, let's talk again sometime. Yeah, thank you so much, James. And just, you know, uh, I th you know, we I think that this is going to evolve quickly. So uh, Next time we chat, I'm sure I might have totally different answers. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest, and, and that's fair enough. I totally appreciate your, your, your being, being straight with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you.